Lucius Cornelius Sulla, born in 138 BCE into a patrician but impoverished Roman family, rose to become Rome's first dictator. Sulla's early military career began under generals like Marius, where he distinguished himself in the Jugurthine War and the Cimbrian War. His participation in the social war against Rome's Italian allies highlighted his military skill and strategic acumen. Sulla's rivalry with Marius, a fellow Roman general, played a pivotal role in his political and military career. In 88 BCE, Sulla was elected consul and later appointed to lead the war against Mithridates VI of Pontus, a significant threat to Roman interests in the east. Marius's seizure of this command through a controversial tribune law led Sulla to march on Rome, a first in Roman history. Sulla's capture of Rome marked the beginning of civil war, overthrowing Marius and asserting his authority. After stabilizing his position in Rome, Sulla resumed his campaign against Mithridates, achieving significant victories in the east. Upon his return to Rome in 82 BCE, Sulla was appointed dictator, an extraordinary measure intended to restore order and reform the Republic. As dictator, Sulla enacted wide-ranging reforms known as the Sullan Reforms to strengthen the power of the Senate and limit the power of the popular assemblies and tribunes. He introduced reforms in Roman law and administration, aiming to restore traditional Roman values and practices. Sulla's prescriptions, public lists of enemies who were to be executed or exiled, instilled fear and helped consolidate his power. He reorganized the Roman army, making significant changes to its structure and recruitment, influencing Roman military practices for years to come. Sulla's actions during his dictatorship significantly altered the Roman political landscape and exacerbated the divide between the Senate and the popular assemblies. His reforms also affected the careers of many young politicians, including Julius Caesar, whom he spared during the prescriptions. In 81 BCE, Sulla surprisingly resigned from his dictatorship, restoring constitutional government and returned to private life. Sulla's voluntary abdication of power was unprecedented in Roman history and marked a return to traditional Republican values. After retiring, Sulla lived privately in his villa in Campania, indulging in literature and leisure. Sulla's later life was marked by illness, and he died in 78 BCE, leaving a controversial legacy. His funeral was a grand affair, attended by the entire Roman Senate and numerous citizens, reflective of his significant impact on Roman society. Sulla's dictatorship set a precedent for individual rule in Rome, paving the way for future dictators like Julius Caesar. His life and career were characterized by a mix of military brilliance, political maneuvering, and ruthless tactics. Sulla's memoirs, now lost, were an account of his life and deeds, providing a unique insight into his perspective. In Roman history, Sulla remains a complex figure, seen both as a reformer who restored order and as a tyrant who abused his power. The legacy of Lucius Cornelius Sulla is critical in understanding the transition of the Roman Republic towards the autocratic rule of the Roman Empire. Our journey through time comes to an end for today. We embark on new adventures every week. If you relish the experience, Please like and subscribe.